Well, Sonny's Blues is a story that also skips around, as many do, certainly as Beethoven was 1 16th black does. And it also has a really tremendous focus. Let's see, James Baldwin published this in the mid 50s. He was a uh, one of the most celebrated African American writers <coughs> at that time. Kind of got ousted a bit as he outed himself, but still a very prominent voice and a very brilliant man. And Sonny's Blues kind of follows Baldwin's ancestral path, as you will. His family was part of the great migration of black people who between World War I and around 1970, these millions of people moved out of the South where things simply didn't get any better after the Civil War with all the Jim Crow nonsense and settled in northern cities. And his family settled in Harlem. Harlem. Uh, he was brought up son of a minister and even took a crack at being a minister as a young man. Eventually, after the war, left to Paris, got tired of America's nonsense on race and discovered the writer within. And Sonny's voice is often considered one of his finest short works and it's kind of iconic when you look at really um, stellar works of mid-century America and it's also iconic as um, kind of a model for African-American literature as well. So simple stuff, the theme, the focus, how does somebody, an African-American, 1940s, 1950s, respond to all of that social pressure that was there to keep people down? It opens up with his reading in the paper, his brother, the very gifted, title reference, Sonny, arrested for heroin. And reflections this brother, the school teacher, about the kids in the class. For all he knows, maybe they're going off spiking heroin too. Why? How come? Right here. They were growing up with a rush and their heads bumped abruptly against the low ceiling of their actual possibilities. That's what it is. Kind of trapped. People are trapped for many reasons. These kids were trapped because society kept them sequestered because of race and ghettos, broken schools. And then you kind of beautiful reference to music here, all the noise of the kids, some of it kind of violent, a lot of it kind of loud, the kids getting out of school. But here's music. This is one way to escape the pain of these living conditions. Beautiful reference. One boy was whistling a tune at once, very complicated and very simple. It seemed to be pouring out of him as though he were a bird. And it sounded very cool and moving through all that harsh, bright air, only just holding its own through all those other sounds. So music is kind of the cure. It can lift you out the way it transports us. It can lift you out of the prevailing roughness. And then a back and forth he has with kind of a vagrant, maybe a drug-addled black guy in the hood who met him after school to let him know of his brother. And obviously the, uh, the street guy reminds him of everything that's wrong, so he's not terribly kind to him. Very judgmental, like, good Lord, go away judgmental. Kind of snapping at him from time to time. And they walk to the subway, and we get, here we go, we get another place where music, the jukebox, blasting in a bar they're walking by. And this girl who just put on the music, look at this beautiful line of how life crushes people. When she smiled, one saw the little girl, one sensed the doomed, still struggling woman 
beneath the battered face of a semi-whore. That is, that natural goodness is still within, even though it's been knocked crazy by life. So these are street scenes, contemporary with the story's opening. And also, he's giving you a good flavor for the streets of Harlem at this time, right after World War II. There's a breakup with Sonny. He hadn't seen him for a long time. And then his daughter died, and the story goes back to that time, when they reconnect. And so they reconnect, and then, after that, he keeps in touch. So this is still current time. Sonny's coming back. Sonny had been connecting with him a little bit. Sonny's come back, or pardon me, forgive me, He's Sonny gets out of jail and they reconnect. Uh, the brother wrote him while he was in jail, this heroin bust. So they kind of reconnect. And then as they're reconnecting, as Sonny's coming back to New York, there are these beautiful lines that stand out from time to time that let you know just how explosive, Martin Luther King refers to this often, you know, the explosive fury of black people in the 50s and 60s. So the line, these streets hadn't changed, though the housing projects jutted up out of them now like rocks in the middle of a boiling sea, a boiling sea. Do you want to talk about anger? You can't miss it there. It's kind of a metaphor for sure, or a simile, if you will. But at the same time, it points to the fury and how do people deal with it? Well, one way is music. The other way is heroin. The third way that will come up later is religion. Ways of escaping when you can't leave. That's how people deal with it. So we're on the avenue. We've got a housing project, beautiful pencil sketch of urban blight, you know. The playground is most popular with the children who don't play jacks. We know what those playgrounds are like. In the morning, they often have used syringes lying around the swing set. And then the story falls through a trap door and we're back into his childhood. Really, really beautiful writing, but there is a big shift. Suddenly we've gone back 20 years. We've got the parents, we've got his childhood. We've got them living in Harlem and the darkness outside is what the old folks have been talking about. It's where they come from. It's what they endure. So they're talking about that dangerous world outside. And then Parting talks with the mother, and at the same time, something he learned just before the mother died about his uncle, his father's brother, who was killed by white guys flying around drunk. And they, you know, gamefully pointed their car at him and didn't swerve in time to miss him and killed him. So this is what it's like out there. That was down in the south, but this is what it was like. That's what the father fled to come north. And then you have the mother exhorting him to take care of Sonny. And so we're back again. We're back with Sonny, but we're back a few years ago. When Sonny came to live with his brother after the mother died. And Sonny is wild about music. He's so dedicated. The brother thinks, oh, my God, you're going to be a musician. What's the future in that? How will you survive? Very commonsensical. And, uh, but Sonny is just obsessed with the music. Totally obsessed. They have a little bit of a falling out because they uh, realize that Sonny isn't going to school, high school. He's just playing music all the time. And he's skipping classes and showing up as if he went to school. So the cat's out of the bag. They discover it. There's another falling out. And the brother tries to reconnect after the war, after Sonny goes off to the war, just as the brother had. And they just don't hit it off very well. They really don't like each other. They kind of have a falling out. So this is all long before the story starts. But then. 
after writing him in jail, following his bust from heroin, letting him know that his niece, Gracie, had died, they connect again. So now we're back into current time after Sonny's back from having been busted into jail. So we've really gone through several layers of time here. And there's a gorgeous street scene. This is how religion and music can kind of pull people out of the, out of the hardness of life. And it's kind of a double-edged um, thing here. You can see the people's faces soften with the music, but you also know just how they've been beaten down with their lives. Really beautiful stuff. Really cool. Good to see that music is kind of like an elixir, a drug of its own, and how it just kind of softens everything. People relax. They become a lot more gentle in the way they look. So finally, we come back. There's a great street scene. Sonny and his brother are talking. Come out and hear me at the club. And this is the first time the brothers kind of walked out and said, wait, let me see what you're about. Instead of judging it, instead of saying, what are you, crazy? You're going to be a musician? He says, okay, let me go into your world. And it's really an uplift. It really is, after their long conversation about Sonny, the dark places he's been, the drug addiction, the just looking down into the pit of his soul and not liking what he smells, they go off. They go off to the club, and this is the pinnacle of the story. It's a beautiful scene. Suddenly, Sonny is welcome, recognized, applauded, and at the end, he plays so beautifully. It's like through his veins, through his fingers, through his soul, through his song, the history of the family, the history of the suffering, and the history of every fiber of his spirit comes flowing through the music and then you get this beautiful beautiful final scene where the scotch glass on the top of the piano is shaking like a cup of trembling which is a biblical reference to the suffering that shakes one's heart it's like the music is an electric current that gives voice to that even though it comes out in this kind of oddly symbolic, blah, 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 symbolic way with a glass of scotch. It glowed and shook above my brother's head like the very cup of trembling. Beautiful story. As you read it, look for those lines that really speak to, let's see, the suffering of African Americans in the early and middle part of last century, and also their attempts at salvation. And we can discuss that when we get back to class.